Hi, I'm Dr. Henry Thomas, and this is the Sculler GPS rowing computer. It's low cost, feature rich, and rugged. In 2021, I'm pleased to announce version three of the hardware and firmware. This is the culmination of over a year of development work informed by consultation with coaches and rowers. To everyone who contributed feedback and ideas, thank you for your ongoing support. A quick look at the new hardware improvements reveals a faster processor, a more powerful accelerometer aligned with the plane of motion, a faster GPS module running at 10 hertz, a 3.4 amp hour Panasonic battery, a four hour rapid charger, and Bluetooth connectivity. Bluetooth can also be added as a module to previous Scala versions as part of an upgrade package. This new hardware is designed to snap together making repairs a simple matter of swapping out and replacing defective parts. Four kinds of mounts are available. The standard quick release rigger mount, a new foot plate mount, industrial Velcro, and the GoPro mount. The Scala rowing computer has two buttons on either side of the five volt charging port on the front panel. Pressing the left power button turns the unit on, Pressing and holding the left power button turns the unit off. The new firmware has a familiar menu-based interface, which is accessed by pressing the right mode button. Continue pressing the mode button to scroll through the menu items. Then press the power button to select an item. From inside the menus, you can press and hold the mode button at any time to return to the previous screen. From this home screen, pressing and holding the mode button overlays a quick settings menu, providing access to commonly used settings. For this presentation, let's start by enabling demo mode. This allows rowing to be simulated so the features of this device can be demonstrated off the water. To start a simulation, we shake the device twice. Varying the time between shakes changes the stroke rate. Pressing the power button at any time stops the simulation. Starting on the home screen, here we see the current time, the distance from your launch point, the accumulated time spent rowing, the distance traveled and the stroke count. These icons indicate the GPS signal strength, battery status, and this spanner indicates we are in demo mode. A plus one icon appears in coxing mode and a checkered flag indicates regatta mode, which I'll discuss later. Once we start rowing, this side of the screen is replaced by the rating and the current speed. The home screen returns when we stop rowing. The unit of speed can be 500 meters split times, meters per second, kilometers per hour, and knots. For this demonstration, I'll stick with meters per second. Distances are measured in meters, which can't be changed. Returning to the training menu, there's a new speed versus rating mode. Here we see a real-time plot of your rating and current speed. This new mode reflects the design philosophy of the new firmware. A lot of coaches were asking about logging and downloading data, but I'm more interested in providing the critical insights they want from that data while they're out on the water. This new mode is a reflection of that. So ideally, your speed should track your rating. As the rating increases, your speed should increase to match. However, if these two lines start to diverge, it may indicate a problem with your efficiency at high ratings, which could indicate an underlying problem with your technique or strength and conditioning. Length per stroke mode carries over from the original Sculler. This is designed to help overcome a common problem with inexperienced rowers who rate too high. The idea is to row at a given speed and the device will generate a nominal rating for that speed, which can be used as a starting point for training. At race pace, we are typically looking for a length per stroke of around eight meters. Efficiency, which can't be simulated, measures how much your technique disturbs the motion of the boat. Efficiency tends to decrease as you row faster. From the home screen, pressing the power button overlays the workload summary. Each stroke is counted within one of three rating bands. In the current setup, we see the percentage of time spent below 21, 
between and above 27 strokes per minute. The first line in bold is our current session, the past eight sessions and the entire season. For coaches looking to polarize training between slow, powerful and high intensity, this tool can help track how well actual on-water sessions align with training objectives. Pressing the power button again shows a list of your personal best race times. Here we see the race distance, resulting finish time and the date. Pressing the power button again shows the odometer. Here we see the number of training sessions, accumulated time and distance road over the current season. One more press of the power button returns us to the home screen. Sculler now has two race modes, distance-based and timed. The rowing computer features a hands-free virtual timing gate. Touch-up strokes get zeroed out, but once you start racing, it tracks the race distance and time for you, or without touching a button. In race mode, we can either select a preset distance or enter a custom distance. Prior to starting, this LED is blue. When we start rowing, it turns green, and once we've completed the race distance, it turns red. During a race, we see the current rating, calculated finish time, speed, and distance remaining. When the finish line is crossed and we stop rowing, the race results appear. In regatta mode, if you stop rowing before the distance is reached, the clock stops when the last stroke was taken. Each race record includes the date and time, distance, finish time, and a quintile breakdown showing the average rating, speed, length per stroke, and time. Pressing the mode button shows a plot of the speed versus rating over the race. Once again, this provides a useful visual analysis tool that can help rowers review their race out on the water while it's still fresh in their memory. In my example, these lines are flat because the data was simulated, but in a typical race, we wanna see speed and rating tracking closely. Diverging lines may indicate underlying problems that need attention. Pressing and holding the mode button returns to race mode. Now, if you race on a river or a tidal estuary, timed races are generally more useful. Functionally, these work the same as distance races, they're just timed. Here we can select a preset time or enter a custom time. During a timed race, we see the current rating, calculated finish distance, speed and remaining time. This results in a timed race record. The new firmware includes an extensive set of drills. The drills are time-driven with a unit of one minute. Three types of drills are supported, castles, ladders and pyramids. Each mode features six presets which can also be customised. Functionally the drills are very similar so I'll just show you an example of how the castles work. Preset 1 is a 20 minute high intensity drill. Viewing the drill in the custom menu, we see it consists of 20 reps cycling between 1 minute at 34 strokes per minute and 1 minute at rest. In this mode, the LED stays red until we match the target rating. Once we reach the target rating, this changes to show our speed. Here is the time remaining for our current rep along with a countdown of the number of reps remaining. Now let's say you wanted to recreate this pyramid drill. We want one minute to four minutes increasing from 18 to 24 strokes per minute in four steps for a total of 16 minutes. So we enter our start values, step changes and reps. The next new feature is found in the limits menu. Detecting strokes reliably in choppy water against the tide into a headwind is difficult. Even with an adaptive algorithm, one set of parameters is not necessarily ideal for a lightweight single and a heavyweight eight. So if you do encounter problems with miscounted strokes, you can tune the algorithm for your circumstances. The idea is to row at light pressure in the conditions where you're having problems and use the results to estimate the noise floor and signal strength of your boat. The threshold can also be adjusted to dampen the impact of chop and the maximum stroke rate increased to support other paddling craft like dragon boats, kayaks and canoes. 
The limits menu is also where you set the upper and lower bands for workload monitoring. The Scala firmware uses a match filter to detect strokes. It assumes that the screen is always facing the rower. If you turn it around the other way to face a cox, then you need to enable coxing mode so it can work properly. Finally, the new Scala firmware provides Bluetooth connectivity. You need to have the home screen open for this to work. To pair your mobile phone for the first time, press the mode button to confirm. A demonstration of the mobile app will be covered in a future video. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Visit scala.com for more information.